if it makes oxygen, there's where it is. The important thing here is water. P Photosystem 2 has the ability, has the ability to catalyze the splitting of water. And water isn't easily oxidized. This is the only, um, the only enzyme in nature that can oxidize water. And water donates those electrons. So in, elect in linear electron flow, light energy is used to power the whole system. But electrons flow from water through photosystem 2, through the electron transport to photosystem 1, and finally flow to NADPH a linear flow of electrons. So we took light energy and water and we made NADPH and we made ATP by photophosphorylation. Blah, that's the light reactions, the linear light reactions. We have a little more to add because in addition to the linear light reactions, there are in fact something called cyclical light reactions or cyclical flow of electrons. So while this is happening, remember there are lots and lots of these photosystems and these electron transport systems throughout a, mem a thylakoid membrane, and there are lots of thylakoids inside a single chloroplast. But in addition to linear flow, we can get something called cyclical electron flow. And in cyclical electron flow, it uses only kind of a piece of this whole system. And so I'm going to redraw, I'm going to draw in cyclical electron flow on top of my linear electron flow. It's going to be a little messy, but in cyclical electron flow, there's a couple of things we want to know. Cyclical electron flow uses only photosystem one. It generates ATP, but it doesn't make any NADPH. And the electrons flow in a circle. They don't flow in a line. So how does it work? Well, the electrons that get excited at photosystem one are donated, are first excited, donated to this primary electron acceptor, and then they're donated to ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin can be in a variety of places. Sometimes ferrodoxin is closer to this cytochrome complex. So in linear, I'm sorry, in cyclical electron flow, the electrons flow to ferrodoxin. They're donated by a redox reaction. And then in cyclical flow, the electrons are not donated to NADP+, but they're donated to the cytochrome complex, where they flow down to plastocyanin and back to photosystem 1 in a circle. The electrons are excited by light energy. They flow to ferrodoxin through the electron transport chain and back down to photosystem one. They're flowing in a circle. This seems kind of dumb. What does it do? Well, as these electrons are flowing in a circle, they're getting excited, they're falling back down. They're getting excited, they're falling back down. But guess what? As they fall back down, that releases some energy that allows protons to be pumped across the membrane creating a bigger proton gradient or proton motive force that's used to drive the synthesis of more ATP. So in cyclical electron flow, there's a cyclical cycle of electrons. They're getting excited, they're falling back down. They're getting excited, they're falling back down. But as they fall or flow through the electron transport chain, they allow or that uh, energy that's released is used to pump protons across the thylakoid membrane, creating a gradient that's used to make ATP. So it's just another way of making more ATP. At this point, the light reactions now are um, grabbing light energy and with the help of water, who donates electrons, they're making NADPH and ATP. It seems strange that plants need to do anything else. They just made ATP. Why can't they power all of their cellular work this way? Why do they have to do cellular respiration if they can make ATP by photophosphorylation? This is a really good question, but we got to think about when this can happen. Plants can only make ATP by photophosphorylation when light is available. Light's not available all the time, especially if you live in a place like Michigan, right? So they need to do something 
with this ATP. They need to use it to make some sugars that they can save up for later and later use those sugars to drive the synthesis of ATP by cellular respiration. Okay, let's see if I've covered everything in these slides. Um, so the summary of the light reactions, let's quick go over what the, our slide 20, I believe it's 27 says. So light energy is converted into chemical energy, NADPH and ATP, right? Uh, water is oxidized, water loses electrons. It's split here at photosystem two and we make as a byproduct oxygen and protons. Oxygen is our byproduct of photosynthesis. It's not really intended, it's just there. ATP is produced at the thylakoid membrane, it sure is, by photophosphorylation, and NADPH is produced by accepting electrons. All right, it is reduced to make NADPH. Now we're ready to figure out what happens to the NADPH and the ATP that we make. Um, they move on and they're used in the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is gonna take place out here in the stroma. Okay, and it's great. We've made some NADPH and ATP. ATP is going to power the Calvin cycle. NADPH is going to act as a reducing agent. It will be oxidized in the Calvin cycle, but it's going to reduce a molecule to make sugar because that's what's gonna happen out here in the Calvin cycle. And that's our next video. We'll go back to the PowerPoint slides for the Calvin cycle. And I think that's everything for this video.